me read three beautiful verses from the 34th Psalm, beginning in verse 17. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Now, sometimes he delivers his saints out of their troubles by taking them to heaven. And sometimes he delivers them by allowing them to live a little longer on earth. And these were the two options that Daniel's friend discovered, that God could deliver them out of the fire or through the fire into the presence of the Lord. Nonetheless, the Lord is always there. I'd like to tell another story from the biography of Dr. Bedeker, and this one has to do with an Armenian brother who was a good friend of Dr. Bedeker's, who traveled with him on his second trip across Asia. His name was Patwakan Tarajans, and he lived in the city of Baku. Now, Baku may not be familiar to you, but it's the capital of the present country of Azerbaijan, and it was once heavily populated by Armenians who tended to be non-Muslims, Christians, some of them in a technical sense, and not so much personally knowing the Lord. During the demise of the Ottoman Empire, there was a tremendous battle between the Turks and the Russians over this territory, and the Ottoman Empire, in an attempt to make an all-Muslim Turkish country, were ruthless with the Armenians. One of the great genocides in history, rarely spoken about, is the slaughter of the Armenians. During the end of the First World War, they estimate 90% of the Armenians in the land of Turkey were either murdered or expunged from the country, and a terrible, terrible slaughter that went on. Well, this man, Terajans, was at his home in Baku when the slaughter began in the capital city. He was there at his home with his wife and 10 children. And let me read you a paragraph or two from the book. From an upper window of his dwelling, he looked down on the turbulent mob of Turks and Kurds and heard their fanatical threatenings as they hurried hither and thither in their work of incendiarism, in other words, setting houses on fire and butchery. The sky was ruddy with the glare of burning buildings, the air filled with cries of hatred and screams of agony and terror. The savages were slowly but surely approaching his abode. They were taking the dwellings house by house. The residents in that quarter of the town were nearly all Armenians. Paying no heed to piteous appeals for mercy, they set fire to each house, consigning the occupants to a horrible death. It was only a question of a few minutes, and the turn of himself and his family would come. The poor fellow spent those few minutes in earnest prayer to God. Meanwhile, the mob drew nearer. The anxiety was fearful. Now they were at his door. Down with the Armenians! Down with the Armenians! Burn them alive, they shouted. Suddenly the howling and shoutings in the street below ceased. A stalwart Russian had taken up his position in front of Terajans's door. This neighbor is not to be interfered with, he said. He is a good fellow. He is different from all the others pass along. The human tide of fierce fanaticism obeyed the authoritative word. It passed along and continued its diabolical work at the houses that lay beyond. Of all the houses of the Armenians in that district, only one was not a charred ruin entombing the remains of the hopeless inhabitants. The dwelling of Patwakan Terajans. What an amazing thing this is. But the story concludes this way. It's just quite thrilling. 
The year before his death, Dr. Bedeker introduced Mr. Terejance to the British and Foreign Bible Society, and his name appears in the report of that society for 1906 as having received aid in the shape of a grant of copies of the scriptures for circulation in Baku. To those who would eagerly have been his murderers, he is supplying the bread of everlasting life. Dear Christian, here we have this horrible situation. A man who is under threat of being incinerated, he and his wife and ten children. And when the Lord delivers him, does he flee the city? No, this is his mission field. Instead, he brings in Bibles and begins to distribute them to the very people who had sought to kill him. You know, this is the amazing truth, isn't it? That we are not overcome by evil. We overcome evil with good. We don't fight fire with fire. We fight with love, and love never fails. Faith works by love, and love never fails. <laughs>